So um, they can that kind of they stuff, have enough functionality in the portal user to do what they need to do. Yeah. So they generally would just be running reports. They wouldn't be entering anything. So why would so we still need ten users if we have that? If we we may not need that many either. That's what I was. That was kind of what I was leading up to. Yeah. So if we get this portal and it's even less than five users, and we add that on, and it does allow these other few users that we have, we would save markedly more by going to five users right. and just having portal users. Right. right. Personally, I feel the the less users, users, actual core users in the system, the better. Mm -hmm. And I think that that core users should be limited to strictly the finance department. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else should be in the system at all, mm -hmm. you know, except for those people who deal with the financial portion of it. One question I had on, 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 on the other part, like my wife's in the town clerk's office. Now, with her user, her portable user, would she able to enter like her purchase orders, numbers, and everything else, and actually make a purchase order out of it? Is that the, that's a you can do order, a, right? a requisition, yeah. Requisition, or which mm -hmm. makes a purchase order automatically goes in the system. You don't have to touch it. You just pull it up. You got the report, right. And everything's there. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You. And and yeah. I don't know why. Um, I, well, it should have been set up like that originally. Right. It should have. Okay. So I think I can actually scale back the cost of the new software. Um, by going to um, the adding the portal portion of it and lowering our number of core users anyways. Another thing that I wasn't really comfortable with um, was <coughs> they wanted us to send a file of all of our employees personal information absolutely Social Security numbers, <coughs> all their direct deposit account numbers, everything. They wanted me to send that to them so that they could upload it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was, mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable Age doing difference. that. Mm -hmm. Cloud. Hmm? Is this cloud? Yeah, t Tyler's PCI DSS compliant. You could have done it without a problem. No, I still don't want to do it. I would have to it's, go to every single employee and ask them if that, that was okay to send no. them. No, you don't have to do that. I, I would do that. Because it's an implementation, <laughs> because it's implementation, they're uploading into, into your system. They're required under all the regulations. They can't release any of that information. They have to do it through secure portals. It's all a matter of whether or not you want to physically, manually input that all yourself yeah. or whether or so, not you want to have Tyler do their job. I, right. I, I understand that. But that doesn't mean that, they're, now they're all across the country, it doesn't mean that there isn't some some John Smith in their California office <clears throat> that decides that they don't like Tyler anymore and... You do realize Tyler's going to have all this info anyway when you put it in. <laughs> but they shouldn't have access to our database. Of course they though. do. They're housing it. The whole they point post of, it, yeah. The whole point of us getting the cloud version was to put the data on Tyler because we're not TCI DS. We'd be, against, we'd be breaking the law. They are. What do you mean? PCI DSS, it's called the TJ Maxx law. Remember in the early 2000s, TJ Maxx lost 100,000 credit cards? They came up with a law legally, federally, that if you house any kind of data of a personal nature, you have to meet specific technical requirements to protect that data. And we are not doing it here. You don't think you. we are? I know we're not. On our servers, we, we're I not? I know we're not. I know PCI DSS. I work in tech very well, and we're definitely not. If we got audited for the, like if for some reason someone pulled, what was it, Malden Mass that some secretary sent everybody's tax returns to China because she got some email that looked like it was from the mayor. If that ever happened to us and we got, the FBI came in like they did in Malden, we would be fine through the roof for the way we were set up. So why are we not compliant then? I mean we have... We are now I that, it's, that Tyler's got it. But we have IT people. Shouldn't they be doing that? Or? We, don't have, we don't have the. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. We don't have in-house IT, and you don't have the money to do it, frankly. So, housing almost every town in America uses Tyler or some version to house their data, because their data centers are out in California and they're housed by thousands of network engineers that are security experts. So they meet certain compliance standards that we're not going to lose this stuff. Mm -hmm. So frankly, you're almost safer sending it to Tyler for them to input it. But you're inputting it to the same place they would have done anyway. They just said, okay, let's work for us. <coughs> yeah.
you know, see, they wouldn't, have, they didn't really explain it like that, but you know, you say I don't work. know. <laughs> we're um, go to work. Yeah. <laughs> all their data, and the guys said, "Okay, you find all I don't know. I, I guess I'm not really still not comfortable with that. I don't know about them having access to. I mean, can they actually go in and look at our stuff? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If you have a problem that needs to be fixed, how are they going to go in and do it? They remote in. Yeah. Well, yeah. They don't. But even they. Remote in. But you know them. about it when they right do there. it. They just. Boom. They remote. They they, they run updates and they run updates and packages all the time. All the, all the That's the other part of the cloud we don't have to deal with. They update the software constantly <coughs> because it's on their servers. We don't have to deal with updating ours constantly to to house the software. I don't know. <laughs> I, I personally, I don't, I don't think I feel comfortable with that, but um, I guess maybe I'll have to revisit that. Yeah. Well, that would okay. be a personnel issue anyways. You'd come from her department in regards to loading the personnel information into, or having her I, I would think administrator so. would be in charge of personnel, sure. so all their files would come out of her office or the mayor's office, right? No, no, yeah. well, well, payroll. Well, human resources. Well, there's both. I mean, and frankly, it's better to be more cautious than not. So don't don't feel bad about feeling the way you do. I talk to people every day that feel that way, and it's better to be cautious than just to send anything to everyone. But that being said, there's definitely you got to put your faith in this company. I mean, it's it's kind of what they do is protect the data. It's kind of like having online banking. I, and your your online bank account is always secure. I mean, it's not. I mean, no. look at all the banks that have been, you know, hacked and stuff. So. No, but if with the town hall servers were housing a million people's bank accounts, someone would have them in about 15 minutes. Whereas Bank See, of America that's, or, or that's, Tyler, they, they're trying, they're trying for, they try millions of times every day to get it. Yeah. Literally. See, now that's something that I was unaware of. I figured that we were compliant and I wouldn't think that we wouldn't be, no. you know? It, it takes a lot <clears> of those days. It's very expensive. Okay. okay, so moving on. Um, so we closed on the permanent financing for the uh, for 9.1 million for the water project in December, um, and we got in just before rate hike. hike. The rates went up, so we did good on that. Um, we did go to the e chip meeting in December. Uh, they did discuss rates for renewal, but they didn't do so in any specific terms, so we still don't have the numbers there yet. Um, starting, everybody starting on their budgets. We should have the first round ready for the Board of Selectmen on the 6th of February. So, um, and um, I have offered the position, the AC <coughs> position, to Shanna Hoyt from the WPCA. So she'll be coming up from downstairs. Um, and the good thing about that is she doesn't need training. She already does the accounts payable down there. So that ought to be an easy fit. Bob, how do you feel about all these WPCA people being coached <laughs> upstairs? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I really like, you know, internal promotions. I have people yeah. from within. I mean, it hurts, but then um, we've gotten some good people that have come into these positions, like in your case, as a temp, right? Yeah, I as started a as a temp. But she started in the WPCA working with Shana, right? Mm hmm. As a temp. And now look where she is. So, you know, you get these temps that come in, and like any other company that, that, that deals with temps, you get to see what they're like. And if you don't like them, you don't bring them back. That's right. And then if you like them, well, later on, if you follow all the rules that the temporary agency has, you hire them. So it's a win-win all around. But you're right. I mean, it hurts, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you know, she commented at that, you know, that she has, whoever takes that job is going to have less work than before because of the fact that, you know, Suez has taken over just about everything. Yeah. Like they do. You say that like it's a bad thing. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. <laughs> okay. Town Administrator's Report. Town 
Ministry report is we hired a new town administrator. Can I introduce you to this afternoon, this evening, and Mary's getting tired, so move on, Joe. Unfinished business. We have any unfinished business? Good. Moving on. New business. Saving Street. Update. Mr. Chair, right, you don't have to come up. If we could um, kind of change the batting order a little bit, Alan Ross would like to speak first, and I would speak second, and then Tony would. Is that because you get up early, or uh, uh, <laughs> No, no, no. He just kind of fits the the way we want to explain things to everybody. I will give you my information, though. So if you want to peruse it while Alan's speaking, that's fine, too. You don't enough pay attention. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you have a choice. You have to give a choice. <laughs> Ignore Alan or look at the machine. Poor guy waited this long and no one's going to listen to him. Yeah, someone's going to listen to him. <laughs> I got that. I will. Thank you. Yeah, I'm grabbing it. one For the one board member that I don't know, um, I'm Alan Rosson, the chair of the facilities committee. I've uh, been on the Facilities Committee, I was appointed in 1996, um, reappointed most administrations. This, year has been, this administration has been a little bit different. Uh, previous administrations, there was uh, several Facilities Committees witnessed by the, the new, or I should say the, re, the rehab of the Putnam High School. Um, there was a separate committee also for um, the library. This administration, um, I have to agree with the way they've handled it. Uh, it was something that Tony and Doug Cutler brought up at the time. They decided that all the facilities should be handled by this one committee. So what we've been looking at is something that we were looking at early on, back in the late 90s, <clears throat> is every facility in town We've been looking at the armory, we've been looking at athletic fields, we've been looking at the library, town hall, Aspenic Historical Society's building, uh, a lot of different projects. And um, what I'm describing tonight is something that I really was holding for a, a, hopefully a joint meeting of all boards and commissions when we got this whole project together. We couldn't do that because we ran into a little glitch in the financial part of it, that why we're here in front of you tonight, and that we described the whole process and why we're here. And a lot of it had to do with uh, changing the financial uh, director and also the uh, passing of uh, town administrator Cutler. And what, uh, where this thing all started back, back then was we were always looking for new library in town hall and early on too we were looking for a community center or it's evolved into a uh, center for the uh, commission on aging now which has been since since created but originally we started and we we worked looking at different places in town that we could put put this facility that would serve all these uses we looked at a lot of different sites and listened to the library especially and knew that the town hall had to be somewhere somewhere visible, somewhere in the center of, the, of this main area around the river or coming into town off of Kennedy Drive. We looked at, uh, we looked at the then PCA building. We spent a lot of time at the provincial house. Um, we looked at the old P&L welding building um, with the adjacent parking lot, which is a municipal parking area. We looked at a piece of land that the town owns and adjacent to the shopping center where the old motor vehicle used to be over in the corner where the highway garage, the city highway garage used to be. Um, we looked at buildings. Um, we really went round and round. A lot of a lot of this, uh, every time, the first two times we went through it and made recommendations, the first time we made a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen and to the Board of Ed that we thought that they should do something else with Putnam High School. In other words, go to either a regional school or go to talk to somebody else about putting the high school students somewhere else. Um, this resulted in a, 
a study, or I should say some talks with other towns. And at the time, I was on the Board of Finance. Uh, Tony was chair. He ended up going to the town of Thompson and talked to them about doing a regional school. In fact, at that time, it didn't go anywhere, so it died. It came back to us again. We went through the whole process again. We came back to a recommendation, which I'll show you, give you a copy of now. And it bring, brings us back to the same place where we are today, just in a different configuration. This was a different architect that we hired at the time. And it's not in the same place on the property, but it also shows Tar Field with a building on it. And that building, the date on that is the 4th of January, 190, I mean, uh, 2001. 1901, no, 2001. But at any rate, we couldn't go anything with that because we had no place to, do, to move the recreation that was there. The parcel that we're going to talk about in a minute, it's off of Sabin Street, was being held for a possible site for the high school. So we couldn't do anything until it was settled that the high school was going to be rebuilt where it is. So once that happened, and we got the new charge from this administration, we started the process to try to put this all together, whereby we could move the recreation all in one place to the Satan Street property. And I got a couple of handouts for that. I just, we just want you to understand what we've been doing, so that when we're asking for some money for engineering and for uh, architects, you understand where, it, where, it's, where it's all going. This is the new plan that we put in front of you and got $39,000 a while back, and we went out to bid and got uh, an engineering firm surveying, and we did this plan, which is going to be changed a little bit based upon some things that have happened since, but we're looking at this recreation complex adjacent to St. Marie Green Hall and Murphy Park. And this next handout will show where that sits in relationship to those. That shows where this is. So there'll be a bridge that will stand Little River that will bring that together to show that uh, to be very efficient for the recreation department and for the schools to use those fields. Easy for them, easy for them to maintain. So that's you know that's what we've gone with this. You can see, yep. You can see that this that this whole project allows us to do a lot more with recreation than we could do it at Tar Park. Tar Park, that one field is superimposed on another. You can't put barriers in for for baseball or softball because then it, it impedes its use for football or soccer. The hardball field on the other end isn't really able to be used because the ball ends up in neighbor's yard over there and we have some complaining neighbors. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. So this, this whole thing with, uh, with this project here, we'll have a lot more recreation fields than we have. This, we feel, is going to be funded by the material that's within the site. There's, uh, it's, it's rich with gravel and we're going to, uh, with, we've developed a, a bid package that we're going to go out with to to a competitive bid, and we feel like that this bid will, the money coming from this will fund the athletic fields. So we will not be looking for money to create those fields. So what Willie's going to talk about afterwards is what we have to do to get these fields. What we have to, because we've taken money from the state for the for this piece of land when we bought it from uh, Brooklyn Savings Bank, and also with the money we took to put lighting at Todd Park back when we did that old project. So, 
Can I just ask a few kind of clarifying questions here? Yep. Um, now we own that Saving Street property. Correct. Okay. That's, that's number one. Um, and now your the, the proposal obviously is to move everything away from Owen Tar into this one large yep. location, and then put the other three needed new buildings, for lack of a better term. It was originally. I mean, that's changed too. Yeah. That's, that's not the design. Of no. Okay. That's, not, that's, that's the old design. Wait, when that's the old design. Well, not necessarily the design, but we're still thinking of using Owen Tar for, for some yes. of new, right. build, new right. construction. Right. He has the pictures that I give you. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll have more, but that's what I need to know to understand this. Thank you. So at this point, at that point, we looked for the started looking at the town hall through the committee. We went through the process and started with 17 different architects. Was it 17? Oh, yes. Yeah, it was quite a process. Anyway, we sent out for RFQs and whittled it down and hired this LLB, which had, in my in my judgment at least, have been very, very good to deal with. Um, and so they're, they're at the point with this where they're ready to do costing. And we've got them stopped right now. But as far as they've met with all the department heads, 